Welcome to a code report algorithm video. In this video, we're going to be covering four algorithms from the STL algorithm library stood set union, stood set intersection, stood set difference, and stood set symmetric difference. For stood set union, we have an algorithm with linear time complexity that constructs a sorted range beginning in the location pointed to by result with the set union of the two ranges, first one, last one, and first two, last two. And the union of two sets is formed by the elements that are present in either one of the sets or in both. And visually using Venn diagrams that looks as follows. So we have uh, A and B, and we're going to construct a range uh, that consists of all of the elements, whether they're just in A, just in B, or in both. And you can see here for our function declaration or algorithm declaration, we've got set union. It uh, returns an output iterator and takes uh, four input iterators uh, pointing to the begin and end of our first range and the begin and end of our second range. And then also our output iterator result where our uh, sorted range was, is going to be constructed. So taking a look at our next algorithm, algorithm set intersection, uh, you're going to notice a pattern here. It's very similar. Uh, linear time complexity constructing a sorted range and it's going to take the intersection of the two ranges. Uh, so note that the intersection of two sets is formed only by the elements that are present in both sets. So using Venn diagrams once again, this will look as follows. Only taking the elements that exist both in A and B. Uh, so very similar uh, function declaration, just the name is different. And note that for all four of these algorithms, uh, you also have the ranges that you're passing it also have to be sorted in order for these algorithms to work. Our, our third algorithm set difference, uh, once again, linear time complexity, constructing a sorted range and taking the set difference. So the difference of two sets is formed by the elements that are present in the first set, but not in the second one. Uh, so that means whichever elements are present uh, in the range pointed to by first one, last one, but not in the range pointed to by first two, last two are going to be in our constructed uh, new range. Uh, so this is going to look as follows, the elements in A, but not in B. And our last algorithm, set symmetric difference. This is an algorithm with linear time complexity, constructing a sorted range that's going to uh, take the elements uh, from the symmetric difference. And so down in the bottom left, because we don't have room in the top uh, right, the symmetric difference of two sets is formed by the elements that are present in one of the sets, but not in the other. So it's very similar to difference, but it, uh, it takes both the elements uh, that are in A and not in B, and in B and not in A. Uh, so that looks as follows. So basically it's just the not intersection. Uh, and so it's got a very similar function declaration. So let's take a look at some examples using these uh, algorithms. So our first example, we're going to use vectors. Uh, so you can see here we've got six vectors. Uh, the first two are going to be uh, used as our input uh, for our input iterators. So v1 is has the elements 0 to 5 uh, and v2 has the elements 4 to 9. So you can see that they share elements 4 and 5 or the values 4 and 5 uh, and 0 to 3 are in v1 and 6 to 9 are in v2 uh, but not uh, vice versa. And so we're calling each of these algorithms. We're using the back inserter function uh, to uh, create basically an output iterator to the back of our vectors that are empty at the moment and then we're just uh, doing some output here at the end. So uh, if we do this it will output the following. So as expected set union has all of the values in both v1 and v2. Set intersection only has the one that exists in both 4 and 5 and set difference only contains the elements that are in V1 but not in V2 and set symmetric difference has everything but the intersection. So 0, 1, 2, 3, not 4 and 5, and 6, 7, 8, 9. So you can do the same thing uh, with sets. Um, it has the exact same output, so I'm not going to show that again. Uh, the only difference is that you can't use a back inserter because back inserter relies on the underlying container that you're passing it having a pushback function, uh, whereas an inserter, uh, this convenience function, relies on the underlying container having an, in an insert function. So uh, both set and map and multi-set and multi-map all have those. So it has slightly different uh, syntax. You need to pass it the container plus the uh, iterator that you want to to, uh, insert at and uh, if we call this code it'll show the exact same output that I just showed and for our last example uh, we're gonna look at something a little bit more interesting using maps so you can see here I've got two maps m1 and m2 uh, their third pair is identical um, but their first two pairs uh, share the same keys but not the same values 
uh, and then we call the same code uh, as we did for set with the inserter and this is what it shows so for set union it uh, takes the values in the first range for the first two pairs or sorry the the pairs from the uh, first range uh, so that's the key in the value and so it ignores the second value uh, from the range uh, the second range and obviously it has three three so it has one one two two three three the intersection is only the third pair so the pairs that are identical and the set difference and set symmetric difference are uh, taking the value the pairs from the first range once again so it seems like it compares the whole pair to see whether they are the same or not. Uh, and when it identifies a difference, it takes the pair from the first range. Uh, so I'm not sure how useful this would be, uh, but I guess it's good to know that if you're ever using these uh, set functions with a map, it uh, when it identifies differences uh, between the maps or when it's uh, taking the union, it's always going to default to the pairs from the first range. As always, if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, hit that like button. If you want to see more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can follow me on Twitter for reminders 30 minutes before contests start, and you can find all of the code shown in my videos on my GitHub page. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.